G'day guys, my name's Matt and I'm a beer enthusiast. So much so that I've decided to blog about it. Australia has seen an explosion in the craft beer industry recently and I for one think this is an excellent thing. I was growing a little bit tired of the stereotypical bitter Australian lager and I think a lot of you were too. However, this has led to an unexpected problem. You go into your local bottle shop and you don't recognise anything. The brands you knew and trusted are gone. What, what, what is this? What is that? What does it all taste like? What does it even mean? Let's find out. Welcome to the first episode of the Beer Vlog. Today, we're trying Murray's Whale Ale. Murray's has this to say about their bottle fermented beer. Handcrafted by Murray's in celebration of our relocation to Port Stephens, this crisp and refreshing, they highlight that, we'll test them on it, American wheat beer, interesting, wheat beer is usually from Europe, has been named in honour of the majestic creatures that grace our beautiful shores each year. We feel our beer, like the whale, encompasses nature at its finest and is a splendour to behold. 4.5%, definitely in the session beer range. We'll see if we can turn this into a bit of a session beer. 1.3 standard drinks per unit. Sold by the 4-pack, not the 6-pack. It is bottle fermented. Those of you familiar with Cooper's, the, probably the oldest craft brewery in Australia, will know that there is yeast left in the bottle. This isn't a bad thing. Just means you try and stir the bottle up a little to get a nice, even flavour throughout the drinking process. Okay, let's get started, shall we? Tasting glass. Alrighty, a lot of bottle fermented beers don't do very well on the head retention. They tend to have larger bubbles that pop a lot sooner than their draft beer cousins. Now, having a look at this, this is very evident. I don't know if you can see that on the glass here, but we have large bubbles already sticking to the side of the glass and very large bubbles in the head. Its colour is very typical of a wheat beer. It's, it's a very golden, but just ever so slightly cloudy. Very similar actually, if those of you who have tried another mainstream wheat beer, Hogarden. Very similar in appearance to the Hogarden. Let's give it a sniff. Oh, very aromatic. That is actually, that is really it's almost like a wine on the nose, but it's not, it's not, it's not wine flavour, it's, it's very florally, like, it's like sniffing a bouquet of flowers. Alright, now for the first taste. Mmm. Ever so slightly creamy, and those florally notes on the nose definitely come in onto the palate, rolling across the tongue. Very fresh up front on the palate. but really not a lot towards the end. This is definitely a beer tasted and experienced in the front of the mouth. In fact, it leaves almost no aftertaste. Despite the session percentage of the alcohol, I'd definitely not classify this as a, session, as a session beer. The floral aroma is way too strong. To be blunt, you'd get sick of it. If you sat down to drink a few schooners of these over the course of the evening, no. And at the same time, it has a really delicate flavour profile that it just wouldn't be appreciated as a session beer. I can see now why they only sell it in four packs. It is definitely the way this beer is meant to be enjoyed. Because of those light, refreshing qualities and the complex flavour profile, I would definitely say that this is a beer to pair with food. Now, the types of food you'd pair it with, I would, I would not even put this with a dinner because it is quite light and refreshing. This is the sort of beer you could really enjoy during the day. A hot summer's day where you want a cool, refreshing, but still full flavoured drink. I reckon the whale ale would do it. And I, I actually, lunch, I, I would say this is a lunch beer, not, not, a, not an afternoon beer. Afternoon beers turn into session beers. This isn't one of those beers. This is a lunch beer. You're gonna wanna sit down and have one of these with lunch, maybe two, and you're gonna walk away Feeling good, not heavy, not weighed down. Um, what would I pair with salad? I'd, I'd put it with a nice salad, some, something tossed, pre preferably something with those, those flowers you can eat yourself. Um, that would be really nice. Fish! Fish has a really delicate flavour profile. I'd definitely put it with fish, not red meat. Stay away from red meat. This is too light to go with red meat. Uh, battered fish, actually the, the grease on a battered fish is, would cut the flavour really nicely. So as you have a sip, there you have a piece of batter. The batter's a bit heavy, you have a sip of light, refreshing beer. 
that is still full flavoured. It's not just alcoholic water that you're going to throw back. You are having this drink because of that florally dry flavour that is there. Like, the way to enjoy this beer would be head down to your local fish and chip shop. If you're near the beaches, get to the beach, sit down, have your fish and chips, enjoy a schooner of this in the sun. That is the way I would enjoy this beer. Okay, now for the important question. Would I recommend this beer? Yes! And here's why. It's very approachable. And in the beginning I commented that I thought it was odd they called it an American wheat beer, but having tasted it, I see what they're talking about now. European wheat beers can be quite heavy, almost to the point of being creamy. I've seen European wheat beers with heads on them you can eat with a spoon. Very tasty, but very difficult to get into. Very difficult to finish one pint of that, let alone enjoy. So if you've ever had a wheat beer in the past and you haven't enjoyed it, I'd actually recommend trying something like the Murray's Whale Ale. Recommend, in fact, American wheat beer. If this is stereotypical of the American wheat beer style, as they say, try it because it is not as heavy. It is, very, it is very light and dry, but it is still typical of a wheat beer. It still had the cloudy aroma, sorry, aroma, it still had the cloudy appearance. It still had the, the good white creamy head, but due to the bottle fermentation and low carbonation, it's a head that dispersed quickly. It wasn't too heavy. Definitely an approachable beer. Next, the other reason I'll try it, it's only $12.90 by the four pack. In fact, it's only $4 for one bottle. If you're going to make yourself some lunch, if you're going to try and pair a beer with your meal, for $12, you're going to sit down with a full meal, delicious, healthy fish, and you're going to pair it with a very nice beer, and you're going to feel very satisfied. So, guys, that brings us to the end of the first episode of the beer vlog. I want to say thank you for watching, and I want to ask you for your feedback. What do you want to see in these episodes? Would you like to see multiple beers compared and contrasted side by side? Would you like to see, for example, me having a typical European uh, wheat beer next to this? What would you like to see? Comment below, we will get back to all of your comments and questions, and don't forget to subscribe and like us, and we'll link all the details of these products below. Thanks for watching.